So in this video, we're going to work an example where we compute the curvature of a vector valued function. Uh, just as a, a quick recap, we're not going to spend a lot of time on this, but a quick recap, you have a vector valued function if your um, uh, function of t, your vector valued function, has an ith component and a jth component that work independently that uh, each respective component depends on the parameter t. Uh, normally we have this parameter being time, so you give it a certain time and you'll be at a certain ij location in the plane. Uh, now, one thing that could be helpful for this discussion, we don't typically do this, but uh, it's true that you can also define your vector value functions based off of the length of your curve. Uh, an analogy I would give is if you're driving from one city to another and you're talking to a friend and the friend wants to know where you are and you're talking on the phone, then the way you could describe where you are is you could say, well, I've been on the road for an hour and they would have a rough idea of what where you are location wise uh, between city to city or you can say I've gone 65 miles and they'll also have a rough idea of where you are so you can uh, base your position if you if the curve is predetermined you can base uh, your location off of either time or arc length and we'll see how that plays into into this in just a minute All right, our goal is to compute the curvature the curvature the amount of bend in a plane curve here. So you can see some parts of the graph might have a large amount of curvature while flatter parts of the graph would have a lower curvature. And I would like to attach a numerical value to the amount of bend in a curve. So a quick rundown of terms we're going to see. Um, T is obviously standing for time. S is standing for length. R of T is a vector valued function and I'm not going to go into a lot of details as to the definition of that. We're going to assume that you guys know what a vector valued function is. Um, R prime of t will be tangent to the vector valued function. R prime, like a derivative similar to your calc 1 class, will give you a slope in the calc 1 sense, but uh, here in the calc 3 sense, R prime, where RB is a vector value function, will give you a vector that's tangent to your curve uh, at that given location. Now, uh, sometimes we want to make that tangent vector a unit vector. A unit vector is a vector that has a magnitude of 1 or a length of 1. So the way that we do that is we take R prime and divide it by its own magnitude. And this norm R prime is a scalar that'll scale your long vector back or your short vector out to, to have a length of one. And this capital T is known as the unit tangent vector, unit tangent vector. So all these things are important. And again, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time explaining where these come from. Uh, we're gonna eventually get to an example here, but we have a few different formulas for curvature, one of which we we'll use in our example that we're about to do. The curvature K uh, could be expressed as the change in the unit tangent vector over a given length. And, uh, and then we'll take the norm of that. And that, that's probably the most intuitive definition of curvature. Look at this very bend, bent part of the line right here. If you have a unit tangent vector that changes wildly from here to here to here, over a small span of space, and that's the key, is that change happens drastically over a small span of space, we would say that there's a large amount of curvature. Now, if, if the um, unit tangent vectors change from this direction wildly to this direction over a span of 100 feet, um, it may not have a lot of curvature. Just think about the Earth. You know, the Earth is round, but when you look at the horizon, it looks flat, um, even though there's a lot of uh, change in uh, the slope, if you will, of a tangent line as you move around the Earth, uh, it looks flat because it's so large. It's That change is happening over such a long period of um, time and over a long span of space specifically. Um, now, if you just took DTDS, that would still be a vector valued function. It would still have I's, J's, and K's in it. So we would take the norm of that when we're done. That gives you a numerical value for the curvature of a vector valued function. Now, the, the, uh, um, 
the obvious problem is this the uh, the practical problem is this most vector valued functions are in fact not written in terms of s they're usually written in terms of t as i said earlier so there are two alternate formulas that can also be used um, you can say that the curvature is norm t prime divided by norm r prime or norm r prime cross r double prime divided by norm r prime cubed and uh, i'm not going to go through the derivations of those formulas um, at this time so here's an example i want to try i want to try to find the curvature for this vector valued function here here's this i j and k component all depending on time t and so uh, as time changes this guy moves around in space actually this is a a space curve but the, the concept is still the same as if it was a plane curve and now I have to decide which of these three formulas I think might work best now the way I'm gonna do this may not be the only way to do this I'm just gonna choose what I think is the best or easiest idea um, right off the bat I see that R of T is not obviously a function of s so I'm going to drop this one I don't I don't think this would be the one to use I would probably use one of the other two now uh, it's a little bit of algebra to compute t prime it can be done no doubt but I'm kinda leaning towards the third option because I've got r I can quickly find r prime and r double prime and take cross products and norms and that sort of thing and I even see some stuff will start going away as I start taking derivatives so is this the best and you know it's yet to be seen but uh, I think I'm gonna go with the, the third approach here so I'll jot this up here in the corner norm r prime cross r double prime divided by norm r prime cubed so let me just find all the pieces to the puzzle then we'll put them all together so there's r so r prime will be and i'm going to write this in component form it will be 2 derivative of 2t comma 2t comma 1 over t and just because of the length of this problem i'm not going to give a lot of details as to why these derivatives are what they are. Um, our double prime would be 0, 2, negative 1 over t squared. So that would be the first and second derivatives. Okay, I'm going to try to take their cross products now. So r prime cross r double prime. You recall for this you set up a 3 by 3 matrix where the top row is i, j, k and then you enter the elements of r prime, the components of r prime on the second row 2, 2t, two 1 over t and then r double prime on the third row 0, 2, negative 1 over t squared. If we can take the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix it will wind up being uh, the cross product which you'll recall is a, a vector, in this case a vector valued function orthogonal to both r prime and r double prime. Alright, um, I'm going to assume we know how to do this. Again, I know I'm going kind of kind of quickly here, but uh, to get the ith component, you basically delete the row and column i is in. You get this little 2 by 2 matrix left, and we take his determinant. So you get 2t times negative 1 over t squared, that's negative 2 over t as the t's cancel, and then minus 2 times 1 over t, AD minus BC as it's often referred to. So that would give us minus 4 over t, minus 4 over t. Alright, for the jth component, we'll delete the row and column j is in, and we get negative 2 over t squared minus 0, AD minus BC. So you get negative 2 over t squared but if you recall for the jth component there's actually a minus out here so a minus minus will make a plus 2 over t squared and then lastly the kth component delete the row and column k is in and you just get 4, 4 minus 0 so that would be plus 4 so that would be negative 4 over t comma 2 over t squared comma four written in component form if you want to write it that way so there's um r prime cross r double prime 
Now I just need to take this norm and I'll be done with the numerator. So the norm of r prime cross r double prime will be a big square root. It's going to get a little ugly, but I think it cleans up. You square each component and then add those together. And it won't be a vector anymore. It'll be a, a real valued function. You get 16 over t squared plus 4 over t to the fourth plus 16. And uh, this actually cleans up a little bit. I'm going to try to do this quickly. Uh, I want to get rid of all these fractions. So what you need to do, and you can do this on some scratch paper at, at your desk, but um, I'm going to make a common denominator of t to the fourth, since that's my largest denominator right there. And then I'm going to break that large single fraction apart and do a numerator part and denominator part. So in the denominator, I would have the square root of that t to the fourth in the denominator. So that'd be t squared. And in the numerator, uh, you can see what you would get if you made a common denominator of t to the fourth. You would get a big square root of 16t squared. And then, actually, let me write, write this in descending order. This would have a 16t to the fourth from getting that common denominator. This term would have a 16t squared, and this term would have a plus 4. Um, that actually cleans up a little bit. There's a couple things you can do. On the one hand, you could pull out a common factor of 4, and then break that product apart, and the square root of 4 would be 2. And under the radical, you would get 4t squared plus 4t plus 1. Now the great thing about that is that is a perfect square, I notice. Um, this factors as, this is just the inside of the radical here, 2t squared plus 1 quantity squared. That's what's under the radical. So with the square root, that'll cancel that square, and we'll just get two parentheses, 2t squared plus 1, all over t squared. And we're going to take this, we're going to put it in our pocket. We're going to hold on to that. Um, that's going to be our, our numerator. Okay, hopefully the second one won't be that long. Uh, here's r prime. Uh, let me just, uh, well, I'll write it down here so I have more space. The norm of r prime would be 4 plus 4t squared plus 1 over t squared, and the square root of all that. We have 4 plus 4t four squared plus 1 over t squared, and the square root of all that. Okay, um, let's see, it looks like this is something similar is going to happen for this one. Um, Again, get a common denominator of this t squared, break it into two fractions. You have the square root of the numerator, which I think will be a perfect square, over the square root of t squared, which is just t. Now in the numerator, you would get a 4t squared, uh, let's see here, 4t squared plus 4t to the fourth plus 1. So that's that same perfect square, 2t squared plus 1 quantity squared. So this is this is actually turning out pretty nice. This will be 2t squared plus 1. I don't even need the parentheses. All divided by t. So I'm ready for my final answer now. All right, the curvature k will be this first answer I had in a box. 2 times the quantity 2t squared plus 1, all divided by, what was it, uh, t squared, um, divided by, where's that formula for curvature again, right here, this is curvature, um, all that divided by the norm of r prime cubed. Now, the norm of r prime was a fraction. So I have to do t two things here, actually. Um, I need to cube it. So you can cube that. So you can cube this and cube that. 
and let's cube this as well. And since that's a fraction, rather than dividing by that fraction, let's multiply by this guy's reciprocal, just to make the algebra a little better. Times t cubed over 2t squared plus 1 quantity cubed, I believe it was. Yeah, so I took the reciprocal so I didn't have to divide by another fraction. And uh, we're pretty much done. Final answer would be, let's see here what happens. Uh, this cancels and that cancels, leaves you with a square. t squared and t cubed cancel and leave you just with a t. So the curvature would be 2t divided by, uh, again, I don't need the parentheses. Oh, yes, yes, I do. Uh, 2t squared plus 1 quantity squared. Now, what on earth does this answer mean? Well, like I said before, um, this is actually a, a space curve, but so if there's our three-dimensional system and you've got this vector valued function moving around in space and you give it a particular time, you plug in a t value right here, it will automatically tell you what the curvature would be at that given time. So notice obviously the curvature is not constant. Some places are flatter, some places are more curved. So we expect our curvature to be a function of t. So this will be your final answer. And uh, I know there was a lot of algebra steps here. There's a lot of stuff that we had to go through. But um, hopefully it made sense because we, uh, we try to go as slow as we can.